Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and today we go further down the rabbit hole of colors in Game Maker. Today we've got a pretty obscure topic, but it might help to make some things that I want to do later easier to understand. So I hope you all get some value out of it, and that is how colors are stored when they're actually drawn to the render target. Like when they're actually written to a render target. This video is going to uh, call back a little bit to the video that I made last week on colors in Game Maker. Colors in Game Maker aren't like the most complicated thing ever, but if you uh, if you want to go back and watch last week's video, it might give you an idea of where this video is going. Additionally, surfaces. Surfaces are a feature in Game Maker, which are um, going to be somewhat useful in this video. I'm going to be using them in order to uh, to extract color information from a sprite. And also um, buffers. Buffers are a thing that I will also be using to extract color information from a sprite. Is that everything? Let's get started. So I have myself an object. I uh, have myself an empty room. Does it even contain that object? It does now. Game maker. So let me put the object in the room. Uh, I'm also going to draw a sprite, and this is going to be a very small sprite. Uh, let me go and create a... Why are there so many acid types that begin with S? I'm not smart enough to use alphabetical order to find what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm actually going to shrink this down all the way to a 2x2 two two, um, sprite. We're going to be looking at a sprite that has uh, only four pixels in it, and we're going to be actually looking at the, um, the values of each pixel uh, when we draw them. Uh, the first one can be, let's start with like a nice orange. I don't especially care what the colors are, I just don't want them to be a, a simple red, green, or blue. Um, so let's go with, this is like an orangish, this is like a light bluish. We can go with a, a purple next, and then we can just make the last one black. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to go into the draw event of, um, of this object, and I'm just going to draw, should I give this a better name? Let's call it SPR test. I'm going to draw a sprite. We're going to call this uh, draw sprite SPR test uh, sub image zero. X is going to be, let's say 32. Y is going to be 32. I'm also going to give this a scale uh, because I think we're definitely going to want it to be a little on the bigger side. So let's make it 16 by 16. Uh, no rotation, no color, and no alpha blending. Uh, and this is going to just draw the sprite on the screen, okay? Uh, that's actually still like not quite big enough. Let's make it a 64 by 64. Is this going to be big enough? All right, that's better. So this is our sprite. Uh, unfortunately, Game Maker does not give us an automatic way that we can get the pixel values of any given pixel on a sprite, at least not yet. It would be kind of nice if it did, but uh, hope springs eternal. Uh, so instead, I'm going to have to draw the sprite onto a surface. I'm going to, um, let's say var surface is going to be equal to surface create. Uh, the width is going to be 2, the height is going to be 2, that is the same size as the sprite. Uh, generally, as a general rule, it is a good idea to, uh, when you're done with a surface, uh, call surface free on it so that you, you don't have a, a runaway memory leak. Uh, this is not a very big surface, so it's not probably going to be that big of an issue. I have 3 gigabytes of video memory, but I'd like to not have a memory leak all the same. And we are going to draw the sprite onto the surface. So we can say surface set target. And then when we're done, surface resets target. And in the middle, we can uh, draw sprite. Uh, no extended this time. It's just going to be the sprite itself. And that sprite is going to be SPR test 0, um, 0, 0 are the coordinates. So we now, we now have a surface. We now have a, a surface that basically contains the same information as the sprite. If I were to draw surface, is there an X? There is a draw surface X. Uh, we can draw the surface at. Um, zero, uh, zero. Actually, no, I won't. I'll draw it at 256.32. So it'll be, um, some, some distance down the screen from, uh, from the original sprite. Uh, the scale can be 64, 64. Uh, rotation, again, zero. Color blending, C underscore white. Uh, alpha blending, a value of one. And this will pretty much draw a, a copy of, of the sprite over here. It's just now being drawn to a surface. The surface contains the exact same information as the sprite. Um, that's the, uh, that's the goal here. Next, um, in order to actually be able to, like, view the actual data of what the surface contains, there are a, um, a pair of helpful functions. Uh, there is buffer set surface and buffer get surface. Uh, these functions are not 
extremely helpfully named when it comes to keeping straight which does which, but uh, buffer get surface will uh, take the binary data contained in the surface. It will take the binary color data contained in the surface and and copy it into a buffer. And buffer set surface will do the opposite. Buffer set surface will take the um, take the binary data from a buffer and insert it into a surface. It'll go the other way. And uh, first, I'm going to start with buffer get surface and um, I got to buffer set surface just for fun in a little while. Uh, first, I'll say var buffer biffer buffer equals buffer create. So the size, as long as the buffer is big enough to contain the actual surface data, you're going to be okay. But generally, it's a good idea to actually create the buffer that you want to copy surface data into to be the exact size of the surface. So if you remember the last color video I made, uh, individual colors in GameMaker are composed of four bytes, red, green, blue, and alpha. And a, uh, a surface is going to have, uh, this surface in particular is going to have uh, four pixels in it. And each of those pixels are going to be four bytes. So that's going to be 16 bytes that this surface occupies in, in memory. Uh, you could hard code that. You could also uh, calculate the number of pixels in a surface by saying surface get width. Um, the idea is going to be surface. Uh, you could multiply that by surface get height of the surface, and that's going to be the number of pixels. Multiply that by four to get the number of bytes that each of those pixels is going to take up. And the buffer type is going to be buffer fixed, and the alignment is going to be one. And again, when you're done with the buffer, it's generally a good idea to buffer delete it so that you don't have a runaway memory leak. Although once again, this only um, this is only going to be about 16 bytes of data, plus a little bit of overhead for like game makers internal management of the of the data structure. Uh, so it's not really going to be a noticeable memory leak, but it'll be a memory leak all the same. So if you were to say buffer set buffer get surface, I can't even say I'm right. If you were to say buffer get surface, I really wish that GameMaker like named these functions a little bit differently. So they were like buffer read surface or buffer write surface or something. But um, the buffer in question is going to be Biffer, as I keep trying to spell it. The surface in question is going to be surface, and the offset is going to be zero. You could insert the surface data into some other position in the buffer if you had a buffer that also contained other data and you wanted to, um, and you wanted to like insert it into the middle or something. But uh, for our purposes, we're just going to say uh, buffer get surface uh, at an offset of zero. And this is going to the buffer now contains all the binary data of the uh, the four colors that used to be. Um, Maybe I shouldn't say that they used to be. The the color data that um, is on the surface, which correspondingly is the color data of the sprite. And if I'm actually going to find a use for uh, Windows, the inspector, um, I, uh, I will open an inspector window for this sprite so that you can actually see it on the side of the screen now and see what it looks like. Um, first, if I'm going to, real quick, uh, not import, but if I'm going to look at what the actual color values are, um, and they're like red, green, blue values. We have 253, 198, 137 is that reddish color. Uh, 28, 187, 180 is the, like the bluish color. Uh, 168, 100, 169 is the purplish color. And 000 is obviously black. So remember those numbers. Obviously you don't have to like commit them to memory forever or anything, but uh, we're going to come back to those. So if I were to say, um, let's get a value out of this, out of this, um, out of this buffer. So we can say buffer uh, peak. Yeah, buffer peak is the one that I want. Uh, the buffer in question is going to be buffer. The offset is going to be, let's make it zero. And the type is going to be a buffer u32. And we could do different things with this value. We could print it out to the console. I'm going to just draw it on the screen. Uh, let's say I draw text. Um, the, uh, the XY is going to be 32, 256. That should be somewhere underneath the, the row of sprites. And the string is just going to be whatever uh, whatever number we extracted from the buffer here. Uh, let's say first byte, the first byte in the buffer. Uh, we could do this again. So we could say uh, two, uh, 32, uh, 288, I would believe would be 32 pixels down. Second byte. And this is going to have an offset of four because remember each of the, the four, they're not bytes, of uh, each of the color values are four bytes long. Uh, next, we could do this at 320. Third color, 
it's going to have an offset of 8 and uh, 352 fourth color it's going to have an offset of 12. And this is going to draw the, the raw uh, representations of each of the um, what's at each of these like pixels on the screen. And you'll notice that each of these colors are not quite like the 0 to 16 million 777,215 values that we saw last time. Uh, these are all 4.2 odd billion. And these numbers are considerably larger than the aforementioned 16 million. And that is because that um, while colors themselves in Game Maker are represented by three bytes, and that's one byte for red, one byte for green, one byte for blue, when the, uh, the computer actually puts them in the frame buffer or on a surface when you draw something or something like that, um, colors are actually represented by, and I, I alluded to this earlier, but uh, a 32-bit integer, and that is going to be four bytes per color instead of three. Hey. And the remaining byte that has not yet been accounted for is going to be transparency, the alpha byte. And alpha byte sounds weird. Anyway, that is also going to be a, uh, a number that ranges from 0 to 255, as do the individual color channels. Uh, 0 is fully transparent, 255 is fully opaque, so anything in the middle is any fractional amount of transparency. And since each of the pixels in both the sprite itself and the surface that's being drawn are 100% opaque, uh, the uh, the remaining byte, uh, which happens to be the, uh, the most significant byte, is, um, is going to be 255. And that is going to be uh, when you when you represent that as a number, it's going to change the value of the of the single integer. The binary representation of let's say this orange color is going to be this number that you see on the screen. Its hexadecimal representation is going to be this, which might be a little bit like less brain breaking. And the decimal representation is this, which is uh, what you see as the um, as the first color value, but it's a uh, it's not super meaningful on its own. So if I were to break this up, if I were to break these color values up into um, into their constituent parts, uh, we can. Um, I'm going to do this in multiple lines of GML because it's starting to get a little bit hard to read. Uh, we can say our R is going to be equal to this. Um, I can say color get red, and that is going to extract the red color channel from this number. Uh, var G is going to be color get U or without a U? I need to make up my mind. Uh, color get green. And that is going to also extract the uh, the green channel from this color value. And var B is going to be color get blue. And now let me uh, let me draw one by run one by one. R um, plus a comma string G plus a comma. So 253, 198, 137, that is indeed, uh, if I recall, what we what we saw when we tried to look up the red, green, and blue components of, of this, uh, this peachy color here. And indeed, 253, 198, 137. Um, if, you were to, uh, if you were to read out the alphabet, and you can do that, Game Maker doesn't have like a color get alpha uh, function built in, but you, if you wanted to, you could say var alpha is going to be um, this value just bit shifted to the uh, to the right, 24 bits, and if you wanted to draw the uh, the alpha channel on the on the screen as well, you could see this is going to just give us a 255 on the alpha. All right. And you could do this, you could do the same thing for the second color, the third color, the fourth color. Let's see, I guess I'll do that. Or at least I'll do that for the second color. I might leave the uh, the third, fourth, and the, th the third and the fourth colors um, extracting color channel information as an exercise to the reader. All right, so the second, the second color is going to be uh, 28, 187, 180. That is a bluish green. Uh, that is going to be, I believe, the second one. I really should just leave this uh, the sprite editor open. All right, 28, 187, 180. Perfect. And again, it's going to have 100% transparency. The alpha is going to be 255. So this shows us how color values are stored. So a, um, a little fun fact that I don't particularly find very useful very often, but some of you may, is that because of the byte order that GameMaker uses when it encodes a number value, um, when you just, when you have a color value in GameMaker, just a, a regular color value, C underscore green or whatever, 
You would consider that its bite order would be BGR. So blue is going to be the most significant bite in that number. Uh, green is going to be the, the second most significant bite in the number. And red is going to be the least most significant bite in the number. And if you were to write out the number as we humans would when we use like Arabic numerals and whatnot, uh, that is what we would see. But uh, computers actually do it in reverse. Uh, computers, or at least most computers, will by default uh, store the uh, numbers in reverse order. And what that means is that uh, you could say um, red is going to be buffer peak buffer the uh, the bytes at index zero, and instead of reading out a U32, we're going to read out a buffer uh, U8. A U8 is going to give us a single byte, and green is going to be uh, the byte at index one, so the second byte in here. Uh, blue is going to be the third byte. Sorry, this the byte at index two, the third byte, and alpha is going to be the byte at index three. And this is going to give us the same thing. We can read out the uh, the color values in the order of red, green, blue, uh, byte by byte, and that will also give us the same number if you don't want to interpret it as a single number. Again, I don't find that super useful most of the time, but you um you can do it like that if you want to. And at some point, I uh, control Z a few times, and I seem to have accidentally deleted uh, that second line there. Okay. Also, and you've probably noticed this by now, but the, uh, the the order in which the pixels will be stored in the buffer and also the surface is, it'll start in the upper left, as you can imagine, and then it will scroll horizontally, row by row. That's probably the order of each of the bytes in this, uh, in this buffer that most people would assume that it would be, but um, column major also does exist, which would be instead of going horizontally, row by row, it would be uh, going down each of the columns. So we can go the other way too. We can, in addition to reading color data out of a buffer from a surface, we can put color data back into a buffer. So if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to go the other way, let's just change the color of the first pixel. Uh, we could say um, buffer poke, and I'm just gonna poke in individual bytes. I'm not gonna like try to do anything fancy. Uh, we could say buffer poke. Uh, the buffer is gonna be buffer. Uh, the offset is going to be zero. Uh, the type is gonna be a buffer underscore u8. And the value is going to be, let's just turn this to, to red. Let's just turn it to um, 255 on the red, 00 on the green. Um, so the first byte is going to be 255. The second and third bytes are going to be 0, like this. So bytes at index 1 and index 2. And uh, again, we can go the other way. We could say buffer set surface. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a lot like this. But instead of saying buffer get surface, we're going to say buffer set surface, and this is going to copy data from a buffer into a surface. So the buffer in question is going to be buffer, the surface in question is going to be surface, and it's also going to take an offset zero. Um, not so fun fact, back in the day, prior to Game Maker Studio 2.3, uh, this function took a bunch of like extra arguments that didn't do anything, and they just all had to be zeros, otherwise the game would like not compile, and it was really annoying, because those arguments didn't do anything. But now they're gone, that's been cleaned up, thank god. So if we were to um, if we were to draw this again, uh, I'm going to draw this. Uh, let's say uh, what's five twelve plus thirty two? Five forty four on the x, thirty two on the y, sixty four sixty four scale, so that it's big enough for us to see. Uh, we are going to have the first pixel in this um, in the surface uh, being set to blood red. Uh, we could also play with the alpha if you want. Although alpha and surfaces does start to get a little bit weird. We could write if we wanted to. Um, into the byte at index three. So the fourth byte, we could set this to 255 if we wanted to have 100% alpha. Uh, we could have it be something like 120 if we wanted to have about half alpha, 127 or so. And that's going to cause the, um, the sprite to be drawn at a lower transparency. Um, if I were to, uh, let me create myself a new sprite. I'm gonna make this like a checkerboard thing. That is not a sprite, again. Having too many, too many asset types whose names start with the letter S, and I've literally never heard anybody besides me complain about this. Uh, SPR underscore um, checkerboard. This is just going to be a little like tile pattern that's going to go in the background. Okay, is that good? Uh, that makes it awfully hard to see the actual text that's down there. I'll change the color to black later, but we can see that the uh, the red square is indeed half transparent. It's got a transparency value of uh, 120 out of 255 percent, which is a little less than half. So we can play with transparency there as well. Let's see, before we draw all the text.
There we go. So that is a rundown of how uh, how colors work in surfaces and how color values are encoded in Game Maker. This isn't something that you'll very often be doing. This I should I should add the disclaimer. This is horribly inefficient. Uh, there is really no reason that you would want to do this in a game. There are not a lot of individual things that I will say are horrendously inefficient and you shouldn't use them in Game Maker, but things like um, extracting color information from a surface tends to be slow. Uh, repeatedly setting the surface target tends to be slow because that involves a lot of GPU bandwidth. Drawing, drawing an image pixel by pixel is not a great way to do anything in computers. Graphics cards are invented for a reason. Uh, this whole thing was just an exercise to show you exactly how color values are stored. This is the kind of information that if you go down the graphics rabbit hole in Game Maker for far enough, uh, you might occasionally have some, some kind of odd situation where this is actually a useful thing to know. Like how colors are stored if you're, um, if you're experiencing some super weird graphical bug. And also, just knowing things itself is a lot of fun. I don't know about anybody else, but I like being a nerd, dammit. Uh, by the way, Game Maker, the manual for Game Maker does make the claim that on certain target devices, um, the exact order in which colors will be encoded on a surface may differ based on like what graphics hardware they're using. So like a different like models of phones or or that kind of thing. Um, I have never found it to be the case that the uh, the colors are stored in any other format other than what you're seeing on the screen here. But um, perhaps there's if you're targeting like an iPhone like or something like that for whatever reason you might start to find some differences. I know that in the uh, the world of Android there tends to be a lot of variation in hardware. Certainly on all Windows devices and all devices running Windows and DirectX, uh, DirectX is pretty well standardized and you're gonna anything that's remotely related to Windows is gonna behave exactly like this and I don't think anything any of the OpenGL platforms that are like not super ancient will be different either. I know that if I don't mention that here I'm going to get some uh, some people bringing it up in the comments. And at the end of the day, again, this isn't something that you're probably going to be doing a lot of in your game. So I wouldn't spend a lot of time losing too much sleep over it. Most of the time when I do this kind of thing with surfaces and sprites, it's part of like dev tools that I'm writing for something else. So if you want to do like procedural generation based on a sprite or something like that, and you want to extract like color channel information from a sprite to use to feed into a procedural generation algorithm, but that's getting a bit out there. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. If you want to play around with this yourself and mess around with different color values and see what happens and alpha values and that kind of thing, feel free. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for links to that in all the usual places. You can get some fun things like your name in the credits at the end of every video, and about once a month I try to post a preview of my future plans. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, usually on some of the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, as well as one episode of Let's Make a Game, which is currently a bullet hell. So if any of that is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, Kiexi, Posho, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Then Nothing Happened, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.